My latest course, SAP Business One Production and Logistics, is out in the LinkedIn Learning Library, and I wanted to celebrate with some extra material to the course. While I cover the MRP module, I left out one feature of MRP I'd like to show you now, forecasting. Forecasting is an artificial addition to the demand in MRP. I have a similar MRP scenario on the screen here to production and logistics course. And we have a purchase tablet here, and we have a manufactured tablet, which just adds some extra parts to the tablet down here as a set. So for simplicity, I've zeroed out everything except the initial inventory of five tablets. And I'm gonna make a few changes in my scenario here. So I'm gonna go back a couple of steps and talk about them. Number one, it's different from the course, is I've changed the start and end date. And I'm now going to view data in period of one month. So we have eight months worth of data that we're gonna be looking at here. So that'll be our planning horizon. And we're gonna go over here. And where I'm gonna find here is that I'm gonna change my time range. And instead of being within planning horizon, I'll also include all my historical data. If there's anything out there that's in the back time, that isn't in my window. This way I'll make sure I include it. Again, we're gonna use purchase orders. And of course, the big thing we're gonna do here is a forecast. And that's a drop down over here, and you can see we've got a bunch of these that are already available to us. But I'm going to go ahead and define new, and that gives us a screen like this. And what you do on the top here is you first make up a code, and I'm gonna call this LMT for the tablets, and I'll call it Le Mans tablets. And then I have a range of dates, which I already set correctly, so 5, 1 to 12, 31. And I'm going to view that monthly. I have plenty of choices here for what I want to do. If I wanted to do a weekly, I could do that. But I'm going to do monthly here. And then I'm going to put in my items, and that's LMT01, which is the tablet, and LMT02 which is the pizza tablet set. And you'll see that my start data actually has changed a bit. And I wanna go ahead and change this again because it's now putting this at a larger range than I want. So I'm gonna go back and change this back to, let's say, 0501, 21. And I want here to be 12, 31, 21. And since it changed that because I was moving around this monthly thing, it messed that up. So now I've got that back to being where I want it to be. I'm gonna go over here and start typing in some numbers for the number of tablets that I would like in that month. And so we'll do September 10, we'll do all these 10 until we get to here and end a year, we'll increase our production a bit. I've got these numbers here. I can go ahead and hit add. And now you can see there's the forecast for LMT here. And I'm gonna go ahead and save that scenario so I have it saved. And go ahead and now run it. And you'll see a change here. Now we have a series of numbers here which are the demand. And if you can take a look here, you can see that. That's my demand numbers down here. And here are my supply numbers. You'll see in June, we have a five. And if you click on here for the pegging information, you can see we've got a purchase order for five as the recommendation. And the reason we only have five is because I have five in inventory. Since my demand is 10, it's already subtracted those five out. So that's why we've got that number here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this MRP module without making any of the recommendations yet. And now I'm gonna go here into MRP forecasts. And let's go pull up our LMT in the search again. And there it is. And what we can see here is I still haven't done the pizza tablet set yet. And I'm gonna go get that by pulling up Excel. And I can actually grab some data here. And I'm gonna copy that data. And I can paste it directly in here too. So if I've already made a model of my data in Excel, or we've been discussing what we're gonna do for the forecast in Excel outside of SAP, we can do this that way as well and you can get your numbers in 
through Excel. So there you go. And we're ready to run this. So I can hit update. And that's all good. I'm going to hit OK again and get rid of that. Now I can go back to the MRP wizard. And I'll run for the pizza tablet again. And this time you see a lot more numbers. And you'll see a couple of things going on here. Notice that the pizza tablet here, which I'll expand, has bigger numbers than it did before. And that's because of the pizza tablet set. This pizza tablet is a component of the tablet set. So these numbers should make plenty of sense, is you've got an increase of each one of these. So for example, we have November, we have 110 here. If we look at the demand here in the pegging information, I'm gonna hit view and fit column width so we can see this better. You can see we've got an MRP requirement. So that is the production order needs 60 of these to fulfill the LMT02 requirement. And then we've got our forecasted demand of 50. So that's adding up to the 110. Okay, we got something similar going on with some of these other numbers as well. You know, we've got the pizza tablet down here, of course, is supplying some of the de of the demand in the supply because we've got that five there. So it's all looking pretty good here. You'll also notice the similar thing down here. We've got some inventory situations going on with the power supply. Over time, we started with 40. And as we go through our list of inventory here for all of the sets we've made ahead of time, we have a demand here that's being set by that forecast. That demand is, of course, changing the initial inventory from 40 and it is slowly reducing its way down to the point where we don't have enough to meet this demand and so it's telling me we've got to supply seven more to meet this demand of 10 and that's what we're that's going on here and then we get to the zero point so it's going to start putting recommendations here and you can actually see all of these recommendations that are set to release dates and due dates appropriately and you can see some of these for our purchase orders. Some of these are production orders, for, for example. This one's for those power supplies. We only have a few of those because we only have a couple of months that we're out of them. And then down here, we've got more production orders as well. And now I'm sure you can see why and when you could use these forecasts. If you have products with lead times and have an idea of the demand, the forecast can help you plan production orders and purchase orders necessary to keep inventory ready for shipment. In this example, for I have the higher volumes in October, November, and December to hit the holiday months because there's going to be other things going on. In the scenario that we've been using in the SAP Business One courses, a lot of these tablets are being consumed by restaurants who have them as order management systems. And in the holiday months and coming up to the holiday months, they're going to have a higher customer demand as those restaurants are going to have more breakage and they may need to have more for bigger parties and things like that. At the same time, people might start seeing them and start using them as gifts. So I'm assuming that I'm gonna have a, a more popularity, which is true of many, re of many retail operations and food service operations, which will start seeing numbers like that. So you got the idea there. Now there's more to this than what I've already covered. And in the next newsletter, I'm gonna cover forecasting with more features that go into this. This, was a Biz One This Power Tip. For more on SAP Business One, check out my courses in the LinkedIn Learning Library, SAP Business One Essential Training, SAP Reporting and Customization, SAP Sales and Customer Service, and SAP Finance and Banking. Subscribe to Biz One This on LinkedIn or subscribe and find more information about all of this at bizoneness.com.